And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Interim General Manager at WEIU. My co-host is Mr. Daniel Jones. Happy Monday and happy Finals Week. Right in the middle of Finals Week. Uh, today we're talking to some city administrators from the city of Mattoon, Illinois. City Manager, Mr. Kyle Gill. Good morning. And Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Preston Owen, making his first appearance on the show. Afternoon, Jeff. And uh, I guess we'll start with the somber news at Preston. I've known you my whole life, but... I really didn't want to see you today. Yep, and I and I didn't really want to be here today. Uh, and as you know, uh, Mayor Tim Gover was scheduled to be here, and Mayor Gover passed away about a week and a half ago. And I always think about this time of year. He loved coming over this time of the year, the holidays, being at his alma mater, and where he taught for so many years. And he used to come and celebrate uh, kind of the end of the, the, the season and what Matt Tune had done that year and looking forward to the next year. And not having him here today, is it, 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 uh, not to be overdramatic, it just it really stinks because he just loved this day and he always wore a suit and tie no matter where he went and he was just that guy you know yep. and and i want you guys to talk a little bit about him before we get into what's going on in matt uh in matt tim because i know how much he meant to you as well so well you go first kyle well like i said it, it's been strange at city hall not having him up there i've worked with him daily for the last seven years and you know he'd be coming into my office or i'd go into his office and sit down and discuss all the issues that are going on this week and uh but no he loved this time a year he loved the community loved mattoon um you know he volunteered in so many different aspects of the community was very active at eastern uh, the council on aging and just put his heart towards mattoon in the charleston coles county community before we get to press it how tough was it that morning when you had to because when you sent out the press release so i mean it, it was pretty tough i mean i kind of knew it was coming i talked to his son the night before and you know he'd said it was probably going to be in a couple days but i still wasn't ready for it it was the next morning i got the call and it was pretty difficult it was it was a somber quiet day around city hall I imagine yeah. uh Preston? yeah um, you know what strikes me about tim was he really enjoyed being with the staff at Mattoon. He was there probably almost every day. You know, he, and this is a part-time job. I mean, it's a part-time it's a job. I mean, it's, you know, job. you're, you're paid uh, $8,400 a year. It's, it's not like it's a, 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 but he loved being around not just the staff at City Hall where he was every day. He was probably every day with the police officers. He was, you know, whether he's riding with the police officer or, you know, talking to one of the police chiefs, he really enjoyed that. It, you know, what strikes me too is that you know, I think of Tim in the, as, as this, in the city leader. You know, I really got to know Tim 12 years ago when he ran for, for council before he became mayor. But he had such a long, long history of, of you know, activism in the community before that. I mean, you know, probably 50 years before that of being involved in different organizations, not just the city of Mattoon. So it's yeah. a big loss. Yeah. I mean, he's... He was a real community leader. Yeah, we'll definitely miss him here and all over Coles County for sure. Is there anything you know he was working on that he wanted to get done that you kind of feel like it's your responsibility to take care of? Or is, or do you know anything, anything like that out there? Uh, nothing I can really point out to, but, I mean, he just wanted to move the community forward. And, you know, he was pretty proud of Matt Tune in Motion. He wasn't on any of the boards, but he was so proud of all the volunteers, and he always would say we've got momentum going in mattoon let's keep it going you know let's let's do whatever we can keep the momentum going and uh very proud of all the all the stuff that was going on even with the covid we still have a lot of businesses that were starting up and opening up and uh he was very proud of that there you go daniel um how has the transition been kind of taking over for him these last couple of weeks well i mean i really haven't taken over for him i'm just trying to fill the position now it's hard to take over for tim again he was there a lot um so you know the way the way it works is i'm the mayor pro tem and so within 30 days we have to appoint an acting mayor and so we'll do that later on this month so i'm i'm just i'm just trying to do what what i can to help kyle and the rest of the staff out you know luckily matchin has a full-time professional staff so you know, we let them do their jobs and, and give them as much guidance as we can. So so you'll name an acting mayor here in a few weeks, then? Is that how it works? That is correct. Yeah. And then the election is in April. Correct. And once, you know, we'll have the election, we'll see how many people run. They can file until, I believe, Monday. And we'll see how many people are running for mayor. The election will be the uh, first Tuesday in April, and they'll take office the first Tuesday in May. Okay. okay. And I think today you said it was the first day that people could... You know, 8 o'clock this morning is the first or, day to file. Was there people in there? I mean, it was a good, good response so far? Yeah, we had uh, five right at 8 o'clock that, that signed up. We had another one come in just a few minutes later. Um, so we have, I think, five for commissioner so far, one for mayor. And then, uh, like I said, we expect to see more. We, we ended up having like 22 
uh, petitions taken out. Oh, really? That's, yeah. that's a pretty good number, really. Yeah. Preston, yeah. do you have anything to add on that? Uh, not right now, Jeff. Yeah. We'll see when I file uh, later on this week or next Monday. <laughs> okay. That's a very nice political answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, One of the things I was thinking about, you know, when with Mayor Gover passing away was the history of Mattoon mayors. Is, has there been another mayor pass away in office? Did you guys, I know you guys have been swamped and it's the yeah. holidays and everything, but is there, has that happened before? Charlie White resigned before he passed away, but he resigned like okay. a couple years early. He had two years left of his term, but he resigned early. And and then passed away. You talked about the Mattoon in motion. Uh, I know Tim would have given us an update today. Where are we on that, and how's it progressing out there? Uh, most of the committees are doing well. I mean, we've got a housing, we've got workforce development, we've got a robust economy. They're all meeting regularly, monthly. Um, things are continuing to progress out of there. We've got a new group that's being added, that is to work with broadband in the community. So, um, and working, it started out as a school district type uh, grant to help get broadband to more students and everybody and it's going to evolve into a matching emotion uh, group so it's it's doing really well okay Dan, i'll have you go next but i want one quick question lots of rumors and at least when you know people talk you know it is about the rr donnelly's building or i guess it wasn't really donnelly's at the end it was a the other name i still call it the rr donnelly's anything happening out there there's been rumors but i mean so we, we've been told that it's been sold. Uh, no confirmation on that yet, but we've been told that it was sold to a group that buys big warehousing, and, uh, big buildings, and use it for warehousing. So I want to say it's Phoenix something, but I... I don't know the exact, exact name. I think it's out of Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's going to be somewhat decent oh, it's good news. news. Yeah, it's not going to sit there idle. Yeah. Nope. As far as Mayor Gover passing, are there any policies put in place for circumstances like these, or do you just kind of deal with it on like a day-to-day -day basis? So, so there's state statutes, and we have some city codes that deal with what happens in a vacancy. And again, like I said, the state statute, we have to uh, name a acting mayor within 30 days of his passing. And the city will plan on doing that here in the next pa couple part, weeks. Part of the part of my 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 job title is I'm the finance commissioner. And part of the job title of the, of the finance commissioner in our ordinances is I'm the mayor pro tem. So anytime the mayor's gone, I, I automatically fill in for the mayor. So if he was on vacation, I would fill in for the mayor. Or, you know, I mean, that happened very rarely in my time as being finance commissioner. So that's why I'm automatically the mayor pro tem until we name an acting mayor. An so ironic name, too. Sorry? Pro Tim, the, the name. Pro it Tim. Kind of gives, gives me a weird feeling. I don't know. Um, how about the, obviously the pandemic has affected you know all, everybody, but for the city of Mattoon, how have you guys reacted to the last nine months? And as we move forward, talk about pandemic and what you're doing. Uh, you know, we we've been fortunate. We thought we would see a big hit to our sales tax, and we haven't seen the 20 to 30 percent everybody was projecting. You know, we've been down a couple percent is all. Uh, so. It hasn't hit as hard. I think a lot of it's, you know, the, the big boxes have been good. The car sales have been good. Um, so uh, it hasn't affected us as, as much as we thought it would. That's good. Yeah. No, I think it's, we, we've been lucky. Um, I think having the, the auto dealers that we have and, and some of the, the big stores, Rural King, and it has, has helped keep us afloat while some of the smaller people struggle. Yeah. Um, speaking of the, this, the, I, every, I, you know, if you go by Twitter and Facebook and all the different uh, social media, you know that there's always people talking about. Oh, I walked in there; they didn't have their masks on. Uh, you know, it's not the city's job to police it. Is that correct? Is the correct way to say it? Or what? How do you interact when people complain to you about masking or not following the rules? So is that that is correct? We don't know if we really have the right to enforce that. I mean, the, the governor has the order, but there's nothing that really states the city has the right to go in and close a business down or anything like that due to masks or to COVID. So um, we've been working with the health department, talking with them. And, and uh, there again, I think some of their food and sanitation issues uh, really doesn't effect uh, on the mask wearing and stuff like that until there is a case of COVID no, it is. in that business. Uh, so the, can the state police do that? That was the other thing that people are... So that's that's kind of how they're acting it. It's more the governor's order, so he can use the state police to, to enforce that. And, you know, I've heard that they're coming around and looking, but uh, I've not actually heard of them being in Mattoon yet. Yeah, I haven't heard of anybody being in Mattoon. The city's really taken a hands-off approach. If, you know, if the state wants to enforce it, they can enforce it. If the health department wishes to enforce it, they can enforce it. But we don't think we have the authority to mandate people to close or 
you know, or issue fines or citations for people you know, not wearing a mask or not social distancing. Okay. Thank you. In your opinion, what has been the general reaction um, of COVID-19 in Mattoon? I would say people have been very cautious about it. You know, I mean, I think people are, you know, wearing masks and social distancing. I don't know that it, people have taken it as seriously as they have in more populous places. You know, I think it's pretty easy to socially distance in Matt too. Right. And I, I would agree. I just think people, you know, believe that it is a concern, but, you know, maybe not as wearing as masks as much as you would if you were up in the Chicago area. Okay. Um, I know we talked a little bit about this off mic, but, you know, the, the vaccine is being shipped as we speak all over the country. Um, do you know yet what the plans are for Coles County and Mattoon and Sarah Bush, or is that all kind of just everybody, when, when it comes, it comes? I think I think it's when it comes, it comes. I think they'll get some probably this week, but it's going to Sarah Bush first, and, the, and you know, the medical doctors and nurses, I'm sure, will get it first. Right. I, th I think that's that's probably the case. You know, we'll probably be more involved as the doses become available. We'd certainly like to be able to offer it to the first responders, the police and firemen of Mattoon, you know, the people that are out dealing with the public on a regular basis as part of their job. We'll see where that falls in line with with the number of doses we have available in Coles County. And, what, and we don't know yet what the rules will be on, like, the vaccine, like, in terms of uh, do you have to get it? Is, is it, you know, for the general public? Is there a game plan? So there's a lot of stuff to be worked out over the next few months, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and I think everybody's got concerns. I think there was a poll out on the news today that, you know, 50% said they would take it, 25% were unsure, and 25% were sure they weren't going to take really? it. So, yeah. no. I mean, and, and normally I think I would, uh, you know, I, I'm not a big vaccine person in terms of like the flu shot because I always got sick when I took it. But it seemed like this one, the, my brain's saying, you got to go get this, Jeff. I mean, I, you know, no. that just seems like the right way to do. But I mean, what do you guys think I'm wrong or talk about that? I agree. If it gets us back to normal, sign me up. I'll be be there in line. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to see, you know, you know uh, how it how it goes as as people get it. What are the side effects? But I, I'm I'm certainly willing to take it as soon as I as soon as it's available. If it's if it's if it's been proven there. I'm Daniel's assuming. a student, or what about you? Oh, I absolutely will. <laughs> Anything to get us out of this mess. <laughs> Good answer there, you go. Uh, you talked a little bit about new business, and we always, this is one of my favorite questions to ask uh, pro, uh, former Mayor G uh, Gover is, you know, what new businesses are are coming to town or looking at, at town? He did that gleam in his eye. Well, you know, I can't tell you until it's uh, it's finalized, but I'm going to ask anyway. Are there people looking at Mattoon right now? I know it's a pandemic, but business still has to be done and, and things change. Yeah, so we do still have a few, you know, it's the winter time now, it's this kind of the slow time, but we still have a few that are coming into town. Uh, one of the newest plans that we just got that I think they just approved was OSF, which is another medical uh, walk-in clinic type. It's going to go in next to Jersey Mike's, okay. which, you know, Jersey Mike's is a new one that just opened recently and uh, still have a lot of stuff going on in, in the community. Uh, Glicks came to the mall. Um, we've had a couple skin dermatology just open up recently uh, out by Walmart south of the uh, Sarah Bush walk-in clinic. Um, had a, a couple of old buildings that uh, Connor Company used for storage. That's a Boxo storage facility, indoor storage, climate control, oh, really? something that Matt Toon hasn't had. Um, so, you know, there is still a lot of good things going on. Uh, Shores Building was built a new building this year after a, a fire last year. Um, Elevate in the Mall, which is kind of came out of the Matt Toon in Motion, yeah. which is that shared workspace. Uh, incubator type business and it was great working with the mall to to get a decent price to have that building put or that space used for the elevate so a lot of good things going on i'm surprised and i'm just gonna throw this out there because i as how many people are amazed that long john silver's closed and they're just shocked i'm like i, I maybe because i we didn't need the long john silver's maybe once a year but it's just on facebook it's like oh my god the world's coming in because long john silver's closed not to make fun of it but i mean we're are you guys shocked at the response online about this I, I haven't seen the response online so. no but I mean, i've seen a few people say that but yeah I, I no it didn't shock me too much but uh you know i'm surprised we haven't seen some more but the one thing that has been good through the covid pandemic is the drive throughs the businesses with drive throughs have done pretty well so yeah. uh Evidently, they weren't going doing well if they're they're closing down. Yeah, and that building is a little bit older. It's been I may remember it's Long John Suffers has been there for what since we were in high school. Since we were in high school, it's been there for been there forty years, Jeff. Unfortunately, yeah. 
Daniel, anything else on yours over there? Um, you mentioned that um, in the next 30 days, Mattoon will have a new mayor. Can you kind of elaborate on how the process works and if anyone has kind of dropped their name in the hat for the position? Well, well I mean, it's, it's I, I, I don't, it's traditionally, it will, I assume it will come from one of the four commissioners that are, that are sitting now, especially given the fact that we have an election in less than four months. So one of the four, the, the city council will meet and in closed session discuss who to appoint as the acting mayor and then we'll have a meeting and and what one of the commissioners will be appointed the acting mayor and do they vote on that then or yeah no? they'll we'll vote on who is the acting mayor so what if they vote two to two are you the do you make that decision or how nope. that no we have okay i mean keep, keep, somebody keep else oh. going until we get a consensus of three so, so. it has to be three okay yeah. that, and that would be th i'd like to be in on that <laughs> i'm sure that will be an interesting meeting Jeff. yeah i mean you know i mean you know who knows but uh, that was a great question by the way daniel i like I, li I love the inside information that we find out i don't mean that in, in, in a negative way it's just how, how the process how works work. so that's kind of what we started this show a long time ago is to let people know how our you know co you know public entities work and, and things like that because that's a that always fascinates me a little bit about the process because I thought for sure they just okay you got to make the decision Kyle but nope Kyle gets sent back and it, say I have nothing to do and, with and then there's a there's a step further after that too which is once you name that acting mayor if that mayor is a commissioner that mayor can either that commissioner can either remain a commissioner and assume the role of acting mayor together or that person can assume the role of the mayor full time which would then open up a commissioner spot which then we'd have to go through the whole process again. And the other commissioners would, I think, that, well, I'm sorry, I believe the mayor appoints that commissioner, sure. yeah. but the council has to vote on it. Okay. So you, you can appoint somebody, but if you can't get the others to agree to it, it's... it's that gets I, deep into the weeds there. Again, I don't know, I don't know what, to me, I don't know what'll happen given, again, we're four weeks out, four week, four months out from an election. I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to appoint a new commissioner right now if that happens, but we'll, you know, we'll see what the council does. There you go. Okay. That's, that's neat. Um, is there other things that the city's going to be doing in terms of events over the holidays, or have you everything kind of done until we get to the spring? Pretty much done until springtime. Um, no, there's, yeah, we just had our just downtown, the downtown Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. last weekend, and, uh, or, yeah, and it was uh, very, attended very well for being uh, COVID, time. COVID times. I mean, <laughs> but they everybody spread out while everybody you know was considerate stayed away from each other and then had that lighted parade which everybody really liked have you been getting a lot of positive response that marshall avenue is um after 27 years i'm kidding that yeah. uh, seems like it i said uh, it is is open and people can get through to the middle school and yeah. a lot, lot of response that it's open it's great <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but no everybody likes it the curb appeal looks so it much better down there and it's, it's much smoother it's much it's better. hard to you know we rebuilt that road from the ground up yeah. It's a lot easier just to throw a layer of asphalt on it. That doesn't take as long as what we did. But rebuilding the sidewalks and the driveway approaches and the roadway and, and some of the undersurface, you, you know, water and sewer you got to do while you're tearing up the roadway, that road should last for you know, at least our generation. You know, being a poured concrete road, that we, it was rebuilt and not resurfaced. So that, that will last for quite a while. Uh, what's next in terms of like city projects that are going to come up next maybe next spring or summer well we you know we finished the bike trail it got paved last year we're going to go for a phase two which would make a new bike trail from 10th street to the amtrak station okay. take it take it there on the old railroad right away um dewitt avenue we did some patching this year we are going to be doing a resurfacing in 2022 that's from 14th street all the way out to logan um IDOT has some plans for us. They're going to, you know, redo the clover leaf on Route 16. I want to say it's this coming summer, and then the following summer they they would asphalt uh, Route 16 from Lerner Road to Lakeland Boulevard. So we've got a couple big projects coming on through IDOT that we'll have to spend some of our money on. Um, we've just been working on the Amtrak platform that's been down anybody that's been down by the amtrak if you look over the broadway bridge or richmond bridge you can see a nice new platform out there for the ada handicap for the amtrak so a lot of projects now i'm not as familiar with the town as the three of you are so i'm just <laughs> kind of sitting here like okay okay um can you tell me some of the exciting tourist attractions and if they're not even tourist attractions just some fun things to do in mattoon that's a great question from it because we're all three Matt two nights, yeah. so it's easy for us to talk about this. You know, I'm going to take the first one, and that, that's the bike trail. Yeah. I don't know if, you, if you've been on the bike trail or seen the bike trail. That was the, We actually get people that come to town uh, to, to come ride the bike trail. 
And I think you, once we get that done to the Amtrak station, you'll see people that can actually um, ride their bike from the Amtrak station. And, and now you can get all the way out to Lake Charleston. And, in, and eventually, um, with the Warbler Ridge project, I don't think you can ride your bike on that. But you'll be able to at least use the trails to get all the way to Fox Ridge State Park from the Amtrak station to Matt Toon. That's been a really, a really exciting project. I am, I am a bicyclist. I, yeah. I ride, and it's amazing the number of people we see out uh, riding. It's, it's not uncommon to see 40, 50 people on a Sunday morning out on that bike trail. So that's been a really good thing. And, and it, it sounds weird to have a tourist attraction that's a bike trail, but it does draw people to Mattoon to. I think it draws people to Coles County overall. And now that Mattoon and Charleston are working together on this, it's, it's you, biking has become one of those destination spots for you know the bikers across the country really across the country that come here and visit yep other tourist track you know we we know them all the time as it gets the the museum down in the train station there again that's kind of the history of the of the train station and and what developed matt tune was the train tracks so there's a little museum down there that's nice to to go and look at um it's kind of funny we'll have people some family members that come into town and they'll stop by city and hall and say my dad worked for the railroads, and he always talked about Mattoon. We were doing a, a tour of all these different places that dad has been. And so I've met some nice people coming into town. Um, you know, Bagel Fest is still a, a, is an attraction that brings in people. Um, right now we have, we have Lightworks, which is always, always a big draw. And, and, and not only you know, Lightworks is now in the Peterson Park, but you know, our parks draw a lot. Well, there, I mean, Lytle Park is a township park, but there's still a lot of people that come to the park and the pool and, and obviously the, 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 the complex that Kurt Stretz works hard on, the, the, the softball and the football, soccer out there. I mean, it's... Yeah, and a new field at Lawson, at Lawson Park. is going to be, you know, done this year, but got moved to 2021 now, it looks like. Yeah, that, 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 the parks bring in a lot of, a lot of tourism activity in Mattoon also. I got a uh, text uh, from somebody the other day about, uh, uh, they just want to know about the stop sign at 12th and DeWitt. Is it necessary? I don't know if you saw it, but I, I didn't mean that I to cause a, uh, people complaining about it or saying all this stuff, but on my Facebook Tuesday, play, uh, they, they said, well, we brought it up and we're talking about it. And I'm like, I, I'll bring it up. And have you got other people talking about that stop sign? I, actually, we had. We've had some requests. We just got done doing a traffic study on that. So, uh, Greg Smith, you'll be happy. We've, we've got the information. <laughs> uh, you know, it does not necessarily uh, have the traffic to warrant a four-way stop. So now it's us presenting it to the council to have that removed and if they're willing to remove that. There so. you go. Yeah. All right. So. Cool, that's cool. Now, the other thing I know that, that is is it's just probably more county, but there's been a lot of talk about a four-way light out there at Old State and at Lerner Road yeah, right. uh, yeah. due to the you know not an abundance of accidents, but anything more than one is too many, right? Uh, your, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you wish it would happen, or how does the city even get involved when it's on the outskirts of town like that? So, I mean, we've told everybody that you really have to start with the state on that, and they have. I mean, we've had lots of people go out and have the state, you know. Uh, asked the state to relook at that and i think they just did um i don't know if it was in the paper or not but there was something on there the state just looked at it and i think they are going to do something i don't know if it'll be a four-way stop or just flashing lights but there's do something to try and change that intersection yeah okay yeah, the city really has no involvement it's, That's since figured, it's, it's outside the city limits but obviously we're concerned about it because there's 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 quite a bit of accidents out there, so. And how scared were you last week when you heard the Amtrak got hit by a car out there on, you know, the oh, south side of Mattoon? I mean, it, it ended up being a, a, nobody got hurt, so it's uh, one of those, ooh, but still, it had to be a scary moment when you got, I mean, when you had a call, right? Yeah, I mean, and then I've got family that lives out that way, so you're just <laughs> thinking, boy, I hope it wasn't one of them, you know. I'll, I'll do the railroad public service. Please do not drive around the gates and the crossing guards. They're there to keep you safe. Well, you know, that's. They were very lucky. They're very lucky. A few minutes left. Daniel, any other uh, question? I know yes. you always have these tough ones here. <laughs> I know it hasn't been that long since Mayor Gover passed, but has there been any talks of a memorial for him, whether it's a statue or a street or anything like that? Good question. There, there's been some ideas floated out there, but we haven't really discussed it with council yet. But, yes, I, I would assume that there will be something. Yep. Um, Again, given discussed. his level, of, not, you know, like it's back to not just the city, you know, right. the entire community. I mean, yeah. he was... You know, he was involved for an entire lifetime in, in Mattoon and, and Coles County and really loved the community. So I, I think we'll honor him in some way. It just hasn't been 
discussed yet. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm telling you, it's, it needs to be done, but I'm glad you guys are already thinking about it. And again, Daniel on Fire Day, man, we, we got good, good students here. What is the easiest and or hardest or part of your job, Kyle? The easiest or the hardest? Well, the easiest is getting up and going to it every day. I mean, it, it's it. I enjoy it. Every day is a new problem. It seems like a new solution. Uh, the hardest is, you know, you can't always tell everybody yes. <laughs> That's that. That is the hardest part of the job. But uh, and, and budgets is, you know, is always is hard with the way economics is right now. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's it. I enjoy getting up, going to work every day. I love seeing the people. We got a great group that work well together. So just hope to keep that going. Same question, Preston. It's almost the exact same answer. It, it's hard to, you know, the hardest part is telling people no, you know, and, and a lot of that usually has to deal with we're treating, we try to treat everybody the same, you know. So if I tell you yes, I've got to do the same for somebody else, and that's not possible. Um, th- the best part is I think like, I, I like serving the community. We like, you know, helping out Matt Toon helping see it grow and prosper and you know i think there's a lot of good things happening and i like being part of that cool what do you ask the most what do we ask yeah the from, most? From, when somebody asks you at, from a from a city leader what, what do people ask you me is there <laughs> truthfully it's probably what's the phone number we get so many phone calls that sometimes i think city hall is uh 411 you know but uh no, uh, as far as actually city stuff, it's usually concerns about roads. When 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 is this road going to be taken care of, fixed up? We're getting potholes here or there. Pensions. Pensions. I, I mean, that's that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. it's been a big issue, and it's going to continue to be a big issue. And that's we, we I get that question quite a bit from yeah, people. Yeah, because I mean, it's kind of almost even right now with the payout with the tax coming in. So, oh no, no. no. Well, I mean, yeah, I think it is right now. Yeah, but I mean, right but now, but it's not. That's not, not going to stay. No. We're still significantly underfunded, and that's not going to fix itself. Minute left. Daniel Jones, anything back there from your point of view? Um, other than all of the changes that are going on in City Hall right now, what are some new things we can expect from Mattoon in 2021? Uh, I think the dog park is a. I, I haven't. We haven't mentioned that. That's another. That's another good thing that's that's happened. A really community based, you know, grassroots effort to get a dog park in Mattoon. That's one of the things I, I'm. That we'll we'll see in at least the beginning of it in 2021. And then Jeff talked about the, the baseball diamond that got extended out. We're going to, you know, have, have that finished in 2021 and bring some more tournaments to town and uh, good things like that. Knock on wood, right? That's right. <laughs> well, yeah, for, appreciate you both coming in, Preston, short notice coming in. And uh, I really wish Mayor Gover was here, but I think you guys did him a great justice today, answered all the questions. And uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Kyle. Thank you, Preston. Everybody have a great holiday, and uh, we'll see you in 2021. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Daniel, study, thank you, Daniel. Study for your finals. I will. And we, we'll <laughs> hopefully see you back here on Issues and Attitudes next year, right? Absolutely. Just don't schedule a class at noon, all right? Okay. Happy holidays, everyone. We will have one final show next week with some guests from Sarah Bush Lincoln talking about health and all that stuff as we head into the holiday season. Have a great day. We are WEIU.